like what this conference has given us is a chance to get those people from around the country into one central place and we look at building something for us that's owned by us, First Nations people, in partnership. And the emphasis there is partnership. With hopefully, you know, some of you people or all of you people that are in the audience today. Um, I'm only a trainee elder. I'm going to hand over to my elder now to, um, to actually announce what we've done and, um, and, and what we've formed, and, um, and then we can um, then go from there. So I'll hand it over to Michael. Thank you. I just say it's nice to be here and see the people. And um, that's my name, Iwari. No, you said by our people, we border, like I said the other day, they cut us in half and they do that border. Um, but when I came, I really had no expectation at all. I was pretty much a clean slate. And, um, Arriving here, I see all these faces totally unfamiliar to me, and um, everybody is sort of on one page, which is great to know that all these people are on one page. And it's very encouraging because I had no expectations, but quite frankly, you know, after two days, um, something wonderful has emerged. And um, what we've done is having listened and talked and um, we have brothers here from West Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, and Queen, uh, Northern Territory, and there's another brother here from Western Australia somewhere. And so we have representations from across the country, and pretty lively people as well. And um, the good thing is that as a result of coming here and listening, um, we have now formed a formal alliance amongst ourselves, and it's now the First Nations Sustainable Community um, alliance. As a result of that, we have now established a student community to protect this school and uh, begin to work with other Aboriginal communities and notify them of our um, agenda and we have started working on, on um, programs um, to set about um, steering uh, this school. And one of the things we did for the last hour and a half was to establish a set of protocols in terms of engagement with Aboriginal people. So that a lot of people want to engage with Aboriginal communities but don't know how to contact them, don't know the first method of, um, of engaging with us. And so we set up a program, we, we worked for two hours now just establishing a set of protocols. And those protocols will now be made available nationally um, through a website, courtesy of our first pledge to support us uh, it's by the, 60, uh, by the 360 group, and uh, if I can ask you, Michael, Michael Anthony, to stand up. It's his group who is, there he is in the middle. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for your pleasure, $10,000 to Begin to work with um, private sector um, partnerships in developing African communities. It was Tony Abbott who famously said, infamously said, that you know Aboriginal people living in rural and remote communities around Australia um, are impoverished because it's a lifestyle, lifestyle choice. Um, and so it's really not the poverty, uh, poverty that has been created has been created by the system that governs us and that what Fred talked about earlier, which is, you know, top-down approach to government. And uh, they want to tell us what to do all the time. And uh, believe it or not, we've gone through all the records of Australia right back to when uh, the first illegal boat people arrived. Um, <laughs> and, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have an uh, immigration policy at the time. <laughs> I wish we had, but anyway, um, as it turns out, um, one of the things that we, we have now wish to do is to engage with people in, 
you know, so many of you um, uh, appear to be very friendly people. And um, with that being the case, um, you know, we, we understand poverty. You know, I grew up in, on river banks and in tin shacks, and, you know, when we wanted to build a room, we'd go to the rubbish dip. So our extension was go down the rubbish dip, find some loose tin, come back home, and we cut a few sticks out of the tree, and then we put an extra room up. So that was the way in which we did it. We didn't have to go through council procedures and getting all sorts of uh, approval. Um, it was just there, we needed it, we needed another big room. Um, so it worked, and we were, we were very sustainable. A lot of people have talked to us about um, our food sources, our natural foods and our natural medicines and the type of things that we could use. Um, I've been looking at this and working with Sturt University for, uh, Sturt University for quite some time with the chemists, Newcastle with the doctors, uh, programs. And the unfortunate thing is that when we look at uh, food productivity, the native food productivity, unless you understand our country, um, then you will start very quickly um, in our country. Because you have a window of opportunity with a lot of our native fruits and berries of about a week or two weeks or after three weeks. And then it's finished. Then you're going to have, you know, you're going to have something else. And in our, in our communities, in our country, um, nature provides all the time. And you just have to know how to read nature, how to be in one nature, at one nature. And the same with water. We don't have a lot of water coming down our system. And we're in a nice battle with our wonderful people called Bible Voices of the Lord Water. Um, and so one of the things that we talk about and that we've taught as kids is there's two trees here that produce gum. It's green. You use that there, you don't need water. Because that gives you all the energy you need. It will never allow you to dehydrate. So there are a lot of resources that we have and a lot of knowledge that we have about our country. Not Aboriginal people are not. And, the, and that, just taking that one step further, the fact that we've been associated with each other now, we've been apart from each other, I should say, for about 200 years now, more. And in that time, I don't know how many of you down there have learned an average language, can speak an average language. We live in a country where there's over 400, 500 languages. Yeah, we've been a, we were a multicultural society before you even probably even thought about it. Yeah. And we lived in harmony with each other. And one thing that connects us and makes us unique to the world are our creation songlines. And through those songlines, they crisscross from east to west and from north to south and vice versa and across diagonally. We have obligations to each other. That must be the bill for we get off. Um, but in concluding, we have that obligation to each other as nations. So from the top end to the bottom end, from east to west, we have an obligation to look after each other and make sure that we survive. And so when we talk about sustainability, we stand here today against a lot of odds. And we've made it. And um, you heard a lady cry um, yesterday about our experiences. That's just one sample of the type of pain that exists. But now to take this step forward now is, um, is encouraging and um, I hope you guys get on board with all of this and that we can work at one and make Australia great. Thank you.